Matthew Voltz playing green, red, goggles. Both these players, nine and two, very much in top eight contention. As we prepare for round number 12, I want to thank everybody at home for joining us here this weekend. We are here in Columbus, Ohio. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan in the booth. We've got Nick Miller and the rest of the SCG Live crew bringing you all the Elder Moon action that you can handle. Eventually, we're going to work our way to an elimination round. A little top eight, a little top four, a little finals action, and then someone's walking out of here with $5,000, 30 SCG points, and an invite to our Season 2 Invitational in New Jersey as it's a port town entering the battlefield tapped. Yup. That is what it does. Something new, something fresh, something fun. Just with another port town. Oh, hello. How lucky. An island to reveal. So we head back over to Matthew Volts. Now, Matthew is unfortunately on five cards here. So he starts off with just two mountains. Might be our first mountains of the weekend. Actual mountain. I think, it, I think that may be true. Yeah. There's a Drown Yard Temple. He'll pass the turn back. Over to Jeff we go. He'll play a Plains. He'll pass the turn back. Riveting stuff to start here. And now just the passing of the turn. Jeff will play an Anticipate, our first spell. Looks like he's found a Scatter to the Winds. A Spell Queller. And a Planner Outburst. He's found a card he's happy enough with. Island the draw here for Jeff. He'll play that island, pass the turn back. Over to Volts. Nothing to play. So here's an Ochtai's command. Looks like Jeff will just gain four, draw a card. A land for Jeff. He'll pass the turn back. A couple spell quellers in hand right now. Patrick, you're still awake over there? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm just waiting for a play to call. <laughs> just tap me on the shoulder or whatever, you know, when a game action occurs. Gotcha. All right. Discard Magmatic Insight. I like that choice when you're sought on lands because it's very hard to uh, enable the additional cost. There he is. He's back. Jeff, I believe, drew a rattle chains. We might, we might get action. Oh, yeah. All right, we got a little something going now. There's a rattle chains. Now Volts has the opportunity here to use one of these fiery impulses on the end step rather than discard to hand size. Just tapping three, you might see Kozilek's return. It's a nice one to eat up with a spell queller. Now it's time to untap for Jeff. Spirit's doing what spirits do. Gonna attack here for four. And now it's all about just keeping the permission wall up, I think. Yep. Assuming Jeff has Clash of Wills, and I can see at least two Spell Quellers in his hand. Might have three Spell Quellers in his hand. Yeah, he's got three more. <laughs> Going to be a pretty tough game for Matthew Volts to win. Well, he does have a, a Chandra in hand. If he has enough time to get there, that's going to be the question. Mm -hmm. But he does have a large threat that can stabilize this game that goes over the top of Spell Queller. I don't know if he's going to have enough time. And if Hoagland has something like Clash of Wills, then forget about it. Yeah. But there is at least still a little bit of hope. The Volt's going to fall down to 12. So Matthew finally revealed the fact that he has green mana in his deck with the game trail. Perhaps we're going to see a fiery impulse here. It's going to go after Spell Queller. I believe he's going to hold priority. I kind of like this play, actually. Hold priority to cast Fall of the Titans. And the reason he's doing this is when Fiery Impulse actually resolves, I believe it will have Spell Mastery then. Right. There'll be two in the graveyard. Yeah. And well, eat that. And then there won't be two in the graveyard. Right. Because it got Spell Quellered. So, yeah. It would have been a sweet line. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is Fiery Impulse resolves. Right. <laughs> okay. That resolves. <laughs> Matthew, I believe, picked up another copy of Game Trail. This is a Traverse the Uvenwald. Oh, he's going to make a little combo here where he gets a land and then has a land to reveal to Game Trail and then a land for next turn. You found it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's 
See, I was here the whole time. <laughs> I was just, I was just waiting for a sweet play to happen. <laughs> Basic force the reveal. Oh, ho! That's step one. Yeah. Wait for step two. And now he's got lands five and six for Chandra. Yeah. There, there's a, there's a possibility that Volts could get back in this game now. There's a game trail. Reveal the forest. Nice. Yep. Now play a Hedron Archive. Oh. How? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to eat that. Oh, yeah. Yep. A little something for spell quality to eat for dinner. But there's still hope here. If Jeff does not have Clash of Wills, yeah. this, is, this is horrible news for Jeff. Yeah, he's, he's right in it. He's knocking Volts down to four here, which means that he's at, at least Avacyn can potentially finish off the game as mm -hmm. well. So it's not out of it, out of it, but... There's a land. Here's an attempted Chandra. That's a Clash of Worlds. Oh, well. Counterspells are cool and fun. Jeff Hogan's going to win game number one here. There's at least some drama there. Of course. Of that, course. Wasn't, that, wasn't a hard, that wasn't a horrible, you know, forbid with buyback kind of game. There was some drama. <laughs> and, it, and it mattered specifically which counterspell he had. If it was another copy of Spell Queller, that wouldn't have gotten the job done. Yeah, this is true. So, okay. Uh, Jeff Hogan does win game number one here over Matthew Voltz. Blue-white spirits very quickly up a game over green-red goggles. Remember, that Voltz did mulligan to five that game as well. So... We'll take a look at his sideboard with three Rending Volleys, three Goblin Dark Dwellers, three Tireless Tracker, two Draconic Roar, two Den Protector, a Chandra Flamecaller, and a Dragon Lord Tarka. We get to actually analyze red cards. I, I think I like basically every card that Volts has for this matchup. It's all cheap removal or creatures that generate card advantage, and Hoagland's deck doesn't remove creatures very easily. I, I could see a full swap where he just becomes a red-green removal deck and cuts a lot of the mana acceleration. You know, the Tormented Voice and Magmatic Insight sort of stuff, I'm not a huge fan of against Spell Queller and other counter spells. So maybe he just gets away from all that stuff and just becomes a red-green removal deck. On the other side of things here for Jeff, two Blessed Alliance, two Bygone Bishop, a Confirmed Suspicions, two Jace Friends Prodigy, two Negate, two Planner Outburst, two Silk Wrap, and then two Summary Dismissal. So I, I'm definitely interested in the copies of Negate in this matchup, the Bygone Bishop, and the copy of Confirmed Suspicions. Maybe get away a little bit from the, the, from the lower end now that he's seen how many sweepers are on Volts' side, um, and just try to generate more two-for-ones, a little bit more card advantage, not be too leveraged on any one particular threat. Well, that gives you an idea of what both players are working with here. Matthew Volts will be on the play for game number two. In the meantime, we will talk about the StarCityGames.com Creature Collection, a very popular series. We thank everyone out there for supporting the fun stuff that we do with these products, including old Snipcaster Made, which is available now in Playmat Sleeves and Player Bundles, and your good friend, the Fruit Band. Go.StarCityGames.com slash Creature Collection to order your items today, or you can head over to our dealer booth at any of the events that we're at. we got all this stuff in stock. Playmat sleeves and player bundles. Game number two about to be underway here between Jeff Hoagland and Matthew Volts. And Jeff Hoagland, well, he is sideboarding. We'll learn a little bit more about the gentleman from Bloomington, Illinois, 25 years old with his 15 open top eights and one invitational top eight. He's a stay-at-home dad with two awesome sons that will be future Magic players, at least he says as much. And he's a mathematics guy. But as I learned a lot from Jeff uh, when I did my podcast with him, you know, he's really kind of upped his magic game. The way that he builds deck is obviously a lot different than a lot of other people, but, uh, you know, he's not a best deck kind of guy. Right. He never has been. Uh, I don't want to say he never will be, but he really likes gunning for best decks and trying to find holes in the metagame. And over the past couple of years, I think he's done a really nice job of doing that. And, it, it, you know, it's they're usually bruised, but they're, they're rooted in some pretty powerful principles. You think of all of his modern decks, he's playing with Tarmogoyf and Cryptic Command largely. It's mm -hmm. not like he's playing with cards no one's heard of, they're just in different shells or trying to exploit what he perceives to be different inefficiencies in the metagame. I like the future, future Magic players about his son. What, did, what would your dad, when you were three, two, three, four years old, what would your dad say that you were going to be a future X? For me? Yeah. Jeez. I don't know, future salesman, maybe. I don't yeah. know. You never know how it's going to work out. Yeah. Maybe a future, yeah, let's go future professional wrestler. Yeah. Future professional wrestler. Bang. My grandfather thought I was going to be a governor. Now Still I'm, could. Now I'm here with you. St I'm just saying you just don't know how it's going to work Still out. Still could. You never know. I'd vote for you. Easy. I just want to be your VP. If you, you know what? Forget governor. We're going all the way to the top. President. That's... Uh, it's, a lot uh, of work. it's a lot of work. I came to age during the social media days, and there's just too much bad 
just too many bad things I've said floating around. Well, it's you, can, impossible. you can scrub the internet. That's easy. Uh, uh, this is be a deep scrub. We'll get you, we'll get you the at POTUS handle. Yeah. That's you right there. And just it, it would continue to be a picture of a mountain. That would be the best part. You don't have to have it be you or anything. I'm sure Matthew Volts is a very nice person. It's my first time covering oh, my Oh, no. Knowledge. Here we go. It's not just the pile shuffling, but okay. it's, it was a slow motion pile. Okay. It's got to work on that. Yeah. Got to, if you're counting your deck, that's fine, I guess. But it's got to be a quick, rapid-fire sort of deal. Oh, uh, you want a fast pile shuffle, if, right. if any at all. Right. I understand. I understand. Would have been, it would have been possibly faster to simply count out the deck rather than pile it. You know, you just go one, two, three, four, five, you know, see if 60 is there or whatever. Well, he's got a method to the madness. Something he's used to doing. Right. That's all. That's all it is. But he's not, he's not sitting in his basement doing this by himself. <laughs> there's, other there's an opponent. There's a spotter. There's the people viewing. The, you know, there's, there's other people to consider here. That's oh, all I'm see. saying. I see. I see. That's all I'm saying. President Sullivan, our apologies. Yeah. We can be better than this. There, there's the slogan. <laughs> we can be better there than this. There it is. There's the slogan. I would love to hear John Stewart's comments about you. I think you two would get along very well, actually. Pro probably. Here's the magnetic insight. <laughs> Another Dis combo. Discarding a drown your temple. It's not quite traverse the Ubenwald game trail, but that is a combo, too. <laughs> <laughs> this deck is built on small combos, not big right. ones. Volts will draw. This is a common argument in R&D is what qualifies as a combo. I have a very liberal definition of what a combo is. Two cards that work together well. Right. Port Town, no land. Not a combo. That is not a combo. That's not a combo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Oh. The backbreaker. Use Magmatic <laughs> Insight to discard a land. Have no third land to play. Classic Magmatic Insight. Yeah. It's been a tough feature match for Matthew so far. Yeah, it's not been great. Although it looks like Jeff is also discarding a hand size. Okay, here so. we go. Matthew will draw. Pass. Jeff might be thinking rattle chains. Yeah, just get something out there. It protects him from having to discard from hand size again. Uh, Jeff drew a land. All right, it's Matthew's turn to draw a land. No, Draconic Roar. Never mind. There's rattle chains. Gonna try to kill that. Let's see if Jeff has Essence Flux. Well, the way he's reaching for it, the answer is no. So there's Fiery Impulse to take care of that. Selfless Spirit to draw there for Jeff. Remember though, if Volt finds land number three, then he has land number four. Yeah, because the temple. And then he's good to go. Oh yeah. Just needs one. We'll discard another Kozilex return. Jeff will draw. Mausoleum Wanderer. See if Volz tries to kill this thing or not. He's got to cast some of these spells eventually, right? Yep. I mean, he's at risk of discarding the hand size, and his hand is nothing but cheap removal, so you might as well try. Yeah. I think he's just trying to figure out which one he wants to cast, if any. His hand's also cheap enough that he could just take a draw step here and act with more information. Yeah, Jeff's even going, I'm ready for you to kill it. Well, he did it the first time. I think Jeff does have a rattle change in his hand. So ah. Trying to rope him in. Your Draconic Roar. It is worth kind of trying to trick him a little bit because he's discarded two Kozlex returns as well. Yep. All right, Clash of Wills for one. Oh, Volt will draw. Oh, it's a game trail. Oh, yeah. Classic game trail. He'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not great, but he'll take it. Classic Shadowland being terrible. Yep. Shivan Oasis. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Draconic Roar. Goodbye, Mausoleum Wanderer. I love, 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 love when decks have to play just horrible lands. Yeah. I think it's awesome. I, I think that it's, uh, you know, you want to have diversity in all things, and it's okay for sometimes the dual lands to not be that great. That's okay. Yeah. Game trail numero dos. Pass the turn back. But now, now the ball is rolling. Yep. Here comes Mausoleum Wanderer. The Volt's going to fall down to 19. We get that Drown Yard Temple back. Oh, yeah. Now we got something going. Oh, yeah. 
he's basically mana flooded now. Right. Now he's flooding out. Yep. The Volt will draw. I believe it was a forest. All right, let's see some fireworks here, baby. Ah, just a pass. I guess he's got World Breaker. That's probably not bad. Port Town tapped. Fire Impulse going to go after Mausoleum Wanderer. That's down. Pass the turn back. Will Jeff. Volts will draw. It's an untapped dual head. Cinderglade, he's got two, he's got two basics. <laughs> That's true. He assembled the combo. He didn't even need Traverse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. And he's got a seven-man spell to cast, too. With a little, yeah. It's World Breaker time. He's doing it. Now, it is a cast trigger. And there are some Kozlek returns in the graveyard. I don't, is he going to rebuy this Kozlek's return? So he's going to summary dismissal that. We'll take a look at summary's dismissal. Great counter spell for Eldrazi it's stuff. It's really good. Gets the trigger, gets the card, Yeah. exiles it so he can't even get the World Breaker back, which you normally can. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't, he doesn't even get the cash trigger. He gets nothing. Nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. I actually like that counter spell a lot. It is a little rulesy. It is not an elegant design by any stretch, but it does serve a function. Yeah. And does the thing it's trying to do well. Here's Ojatai's command. Going to get back old rattle chains and draw a card. It's also a good progression, you know? Like, let the Eldrazi be good for a set or two, let them do their thing, and then give people some answers in case they're overpowered or people are frustrated by you. Yeah. Selfless Spirit to draw there for Jeff. He'll pass the turn back over to Volts. In contrast to Mirrodin, let's say, where they <laughs> printed a million shatters in the artifact set. Yeah. And the artifacts still could not be and then, and then the artifacts were busted. Yep. And they, the artifacts had to be busted to be playable because they've made so many good shatters. Yep. That's, not a, that's typically not how you want to do things. At least in some extreme decks, as we've seen in the past. Yeah. And then they also printed really good cards that interact with the artifacts that are not shatterable. Right. Let's hog, Moriak Rigger. You know, whatever. It's fine. Tireless Tracker. I don't have nightmares about still losing to those decks. Tracker has been quellered. Tireless Tracker is a way for Foltz to pull ahead here if we can get this going. Rending Volley. Rattle Chains. Give it Hexproof. That's on the stack. I think he's got to fall the Titans in hand. I'm not sure how much it can do right now. Yeah, he was holding the land back in his hand here so he would be able to play the land mm -hmm. for the tireless tracker. All right, Volley's going to get swallowed up by Rattle Chains. That. Is a Drown Your Temple. This is a Fall of the Titans. Now, I believe that still has Hexproof because of yeah. the Rattle Change. Yeah, so this is not going to work out very well for Volts at all. Right. Now, he's all the resources are gone. I think he still gets to kill the Rattle Change, though, right? Yeah, he gets to kill the Rattle Change. But the Spell Queller is the real, the real prize that yeah. he's not going to get. So now Jeff is going to untap and draw. Handful of cards against nothing. Yep. And with Selfless Spirit in hand and another Spell Queller, he's probably going to be able to protect the Spell Queller pretty easily. It's pretty well protected against Kozlek's return, coming back, something like that. He's got Scattered of the Winds in hand as mm -hmm. well, so he's got a hard counter for something like Chandra. Jeff, firmly in the driver's seat. This is exactly where this deck wants to play from. You know, if it can ever get ahead like this, it's really hard to come back against it. There's another Selfless Spirit. It's just about if it can actually get ahead, as Volts oh. is going to draw another card. And I like the sideboard options that Volts had for the matchup. I think something like Tireless Tracker on turn three is great against Jeff's deck. It's mm -hmm. just... He missed some early land drops, and by the time he got something going, Jeff was willing, ready to play two spells a turn against Volts' one spell a turn, and uh, now we're here. Well, Volts has drawn something that's relevant. It's a tormenting voice, discarding a Traverse the Uvenwald. 
And I was going to comment, assuming that it happened, that Spellcrawler ever got the chance to eat a Tormenting Voice or a Magmatic Insight, which just leads me to believe that cards like that are very difficult to play now. That's, I, I, I said during the sideboarding, I would have cut all that stuff. Yeah. It is just too likely it gets tagged by counterspells, just got a, a million of them, um, and you don't really want to cast those on the way out if you kill a uh, Spellcrawler. Jeff Hogan going to win this match. Two games to zero over Matthew Volts. Blue White Spirits destroys Green Red Goggles. And for Jeff, it's 10 and 2 with three rounds left to go. Very much in top eight contention. Yeah, unfortunate for Matthew there. You know, two unfortunate draws. Uh, stalled on lands in one of the games and mulligan to five in the other. Never really got off the ground. But I, I think that it's for a deck that's trying to piece a lot of different puzzle pieces together, a deck with Spell Queller, Clash of Wills, and a bunch of counter spells, it's going to be an uphill battle.